All right, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you very much, and, and greetings from Finland. It's uh, 6 p.m. in the in the afternoon or uh, early evening here in Helsinki, and I'm glad to be joining your Latin American session and giving you uh, uh, a presentation regarding LSD buses, and this is. Uh, work based on, on the, uh, actually several parts, uh, several years long cooperation in Helsinki region, Helsinki the capital of Finland. And we as VTT, we are the Technical Research Center of Finland, an independent state, 100% state-owned uh, research center focusing on, on technology research and development. <clears throat> And uh, I will be presenting uh, uh, on LFT buses, LFT bus systems based on, on, on activity in, in Finland, in Helsinki, and also uh, experience from a study we did to northern Norway in, in Trumsa, city of Trumsa, very in the very north of Norway. Uh, So a little bit uh, background and, and uh, to start with here. Uh, an electric bus system. So then, then uh, we need to talk about transport system. It, it's a com complete systemic uh, approach as the well transport system in any city, be it a small smaller town or Metropoli, Megacity, or Santiago, Buenos Aires, uh, Sao Paulo, or any, any Latin American large city, Mexico City, and so on. It's a very much a comprehensive uh, question touching many aspects of the city. The transport system, planning of the city, where, where people live, where the growth areas are, where people work, people move from, from home to work, with public transport, congestion. Then it's very much about the vehicles, in this case buses of the public transport system. How the vehicles are designed and now we want to introduce a new technology. Uh, conventional diesel buses uh, are in use in most cases. Some, some cities also use some alternative or advanced fuels such as biofuels and so on. But in many cities it's a major development in Europe and, and elsewhere to introduce fully electric buses. And so then we need to understand the bus vehicle technology, what, what impact that has into the whole system. So we are talking about batteries, uh, uh, traction batteries, the powertrain, electric motors, machines, inverters, so on. And then we need the energy supply. And this is very different with electric buses compared to conventional diesel buses, which can be just filled at the bus depot. And basically then that fuel will uh, be enough for the whole day of operation. There will be differences or there are clear differences with electric buses how to charge and where to charge. I will come back to this. So it's a comprehensive approach that is needed to make the, the electric buses a very cost effective and, and well performing part of the public transport system. Electric buses are very attractive. Uh, it could be, a, let's say, a sweet spot or low hanging fruit. That's the very attractive way where to implement commercial electric vehicles. They have fixed routes, schedules. We know which routes they operate. We know the bus stops and locations. So it's good to good to framework for planning. What is very different from passenger cars is that the commercial vehicles, buses therein, have a high utilization rate. They are operating, let's say, 20 hours per day or even 24 hours per day. 
the, the cost structure. I will come get back towards the end of the presentation to the cost, total cost of ownership. And that's what should be also the driving force that it's economically viable. So they are more capital intensive, the, the buses are more expensive, but the attractive part is the energy cost is much lower. And also the efficiency of the vehicles is high. So then, then we can compensate for the higher initial price of the vehicle by low energy and high utilization. Of course, we, we all know the, the basic benefits of, of uh, electric uh, vehicles or electric buses, low emissions, low noise, comfortable ride, no vibrations when standing still. They are easier to automize. They, they have digital electronic systems, better co control. They are smooth in acceleration. Good way to mitigate uh, air pollution problems because of the low local emissions and so on. And of course, electric systems have potential for multimodality, trolley, rail systems, trams, and also other types of vehicles, urban deliveries, trucks, vans, refuse trucks, and so on. So this will be, now we are a little bit, oh, we are focusing on electric buses now, but just keep in mind maybe two, three years from now, five years from now, when, when the electric bus pilots in Latin America are already up and running, then it's just to build on that and take, take the next step to take refuse trucks, some deliv deliveries, uh, other types of vehicles, which could be utilizing the same type of infra infrastructures as we build up for the electric buses. We've been talking to many cities. They are the UITP, for example, the International Organization for Public Transport. <clears throat> they are coordinating the flagship project, ZEUS, uh, where there's a, a number of uh, demonstrations in Europe. So we are part of that project and we work closely with analyzing many cities in Europe in their electric bus pilots and demonstrations. And also we did work with Helsinki, other Finnish cities, Tromsø in Norway, and many typical questions when cities uh, plan these are listed here. There are of course many more and many more technical and many more economic and so on, but these are often encountered. What is the cost? How much does it cost to operate electric bus and electric bus systems? which routes or which lines should be electrified? What are the most potential best routes to select? How do we do reliability? Make sure that the, the buses run reliable. Where to place the charging infrastructure? How to dimension it? How, how what should be the power? How we should charge and where we should charge? What are the operational margins? in terms of energy in the battery and the flexibility for operation. How to prepare for disturbances, that's also to do with the margins. What happens in winter conditions? Okay, this, this is, we are in the north and you are in the south. We could say uh, what happens in, in equatorial high humidity, high temperature conditions. How do we make sure that everything works there? Or if we go down in the, the very south, so then again, there's winter or high altitudes. And how to scale up from one bus of demonstration to 10 bus pilots to 100 buses and maybe the procurement commercial phase with 1,000 buses or 2,000 buses. How do we take the steps to, to make this uh, under control? Here we have listed some uh, performance or key performance indicators, the KPIs uh, from the PTA, Public Transport Authority, and then the PTO, the uh, uh, Public Transport Operator point of view. So what, what should we ensure? And I will just go briefly through. 
there's a longer list and we've worked quite a lot recently on this in the Helsinki region with the PTA called HSL, Helsinki Region Transport, where we identified 10 KPIs, key performance indicators for assessing the ongoing pilot project. So sustainability, of course, it's a very important one. So then we have the environmental goals, uh, societal impacts, emissions and noise and so on. Productivity. Uh, then it's about uh, uh, the uh, number of vehicles, number of uh, cars when replacing conventional uh, buses with the electric buses that we don't increase the number of, of vehicles or increase the number of time minutes in the timetable of the rotation of the vehicles and this has a direct connection with the TCO total cost of ownership so productivity the the often there's a requirement from the PTA or the city and the, so this and this many uh, round uh, trips per day should be operated. Then operability is actually from the operator point of view very important. So how, how flexible are they, the buses? How good is the infrastructure for charging? Reliability, of course it's clear that the systems need to be reliable, both the vehicles and the charging infrastructure. And then the last one attractiveness and comfort then it's much of the of the customer the passenger perspective how attractive is uh, public transport as a whole so this is uh, showing the approach in Helsinki region which is about 1.3 million people uh, you could say medium size city and the timeline <clears throat> below and now we started maybe five years ago working with vehicle technology the powertrain understanding what is inside the bus what kind of motor what kind of battery what is the energy consumption of that bus then later on maybe two years later it became evident the system needs to be addressed. So the system is the transport system and the system is the energy system. That's the slide I started with. So we need to, to look much more than just the vehicle. What is the charging technology? How do we charge? What kind of connection with the bus, between the bus and the grid? What are the concepts of operation? I will get back to these concepts. A few vehicles in the system demonstration then next step the, the pilot pre-commercial pilot and this is where Helsinki region is at the moment we are building market dialogue and the ecosystem so different kind of kinds of, of players are needed we need uh, the PTA the transport authority we need the city or cities when it's like in, in here it, it's a different cities which belong to the greater area. We need the OEMs, the vehicle manufacturers, the OEMs, the, the charging infrastructure, charging equipment manufacturers, different types of service providers for charging operations, billing, back office service maintenance. And this is the inf like the, the ecosystem. And it's very important that this ecosystem is in place it needs to be built up locally and it, it also involves education of, of different people different parties from the planning operations services and technology so that uh, everything can work together the roles are clear and this is uh, then the last step before yeah yeah just to add that this is something that should be should be built up in each country or each city more or less locally to find the right partners of course the technology providers are there in the market and that's also what is needed there needs to be open market and competition between the technology providers otherwise the, it will be a monopoly 
and that that's not good for for the technology and innovations to to foster so the last step then in helsinki it will be this year or next year to enter into commercial tenders commercially uh, procured uh, transport services by the operators when the electrical bus systems enter become business as usual so then there are the value chains value networks service providers are there several bus operators needed charging infrastructure uh, equipment are available and so on and that's when the rollout the the scale scale up starts now i get back to the concepts of operation keep it quite uh, brief two basic concepts number one here overnight charging at the depot so basically then then we have a high vehicle cost we have a large battery in the vehicle typically it's around 300 kilowatt hours and as a rule of thumb you could say that driving one kilometer takes one kilowatt kilowatt hour of energy if it's a more efficient bus it takes less if it's a less efficient bus it takes more energy and basically the larger battery the heavier the bus and the, the more energy it consumes uh, for these depot charging buses the first concept each bus needs a dedicated low power charger at the depot so it's charged overnight and then during the day the, the bus is driven as long as there is energy and when the energy the battery is uh, empty then the, the bus needs to go back to back to the depot and you cannot drive more until you charge recharge the battery and then we have uh, the other concept basic concept opportunity charging automatic high power charging and this works in the way that you have located high power automatic charging and there are different ways of contacting between the charging and the bus it's pantographs automatic pantographs moving up or down and then it's typically 300 kilowatts or 400 kilowatts of power so the charging equipment is uh, much more expensive on the other hand it's shared so if it's at the end stops of of each route so all the buses driving that route can utilize those two or three uh, chargers it could be also some midpoint or nodal point terminals uh, of many routes and so on and then the battery in the car is much uh, smaller downsized battery so it could be let's say 60 to 80 kilowatt hours you can drive less but then you need more charging and that charging takes place during the day while operating during the extra minutes when at the end stop or at the terminal and then of course there can be something in between so that there's overnight charging a medium-sized battery overnight charging and then additional fast charging during the day then i'll just give a couple of examples what is our approach how we analytically design and and plan uh, bus systems and this is the base for showing um, just a case example from Tromsø in Norway. So we have developed our own uh, software and simulation tool which is uh, GIS, Geographic Information System. So basically we take any open street map or open access uh, in geographic data, maps of any city. It could be some, we're already working on Santiago in cooperation with the Central Mario Molina and we've been working with the Tromsø in Norway and we could pick any city in the world basically have the map and then have the information on the bus routes make them uh, describe them on the map then describe the vehicle the powertrain battery size 
and, and access to other open data such as the intersections, uh, traffic lights, speed limits, uh, duty cycle, and so on. And then from our bus database, we have we have uh, one of the best database experimental ba database on energy buses from our laboratory. So we can tailor models for the buses and then simulate different types of electric buses in different cities. Uh, topology, including the, the, the height differences, uh, speed profiles, uh, energy consumption, power consumption, regeneration, and so on. So this is one example uh, I will talk a little bit more. It's uh, from the town of Trumsa in northern Norway where we have constructed uh, this specific uh, route and then uh, working on analyzing the route and transport system, transit system in the city, finding out the most potential uh, routes, cases to identify, dimensioning the vehicles, uh, machines, location and dimensioning of the charging nodes. It could be depot charging or the opportunity charging and also the sensitivity of margins, operational margins and, and the different factors that could or will affect that. <coughs> and of course this can be utilized for, by different parties, the cities, public transport authorities, uh, the bus operators and so on. So to be more concrete, I will show something. Uh, this is a, a photograph from, from uh, Trumse. I selected this one because I know that you have some very nice and beautiful mountains in Latin America, which is meaning that there are some height differences, which are much larger than here in this, this case, but, but uh, this is the highest hills we have so far simulated with our approach. And this is, was also led, the, the study led to the fact that we needed to adjust the powertrain of the bus so that we can climb up the hills with a full, full load bus. So in this study, the task was study the feasibility of electric buses in the city of Tromsø. What kind of buses would be suitable? What kind of concept? Was it the depot charging was the first concept? and the opportunity charging was the second concept. Which one of these would be more viable, better one? Uh, which bus lines or routes should be selected? It's a small town, so then there are not a very large number of buses per route. So then we ended up actually combining different routes also so that they would be optimal for the total cost so that as many buses as possible can can share uh, infrastructure. How to take into account the special conditions, uh, economic, environmental impact, and then to make a proposal. And this is just an overview of the of the. It's a small island and hills hills on both sides, and the bus routes. And this is just selecting one route, number 26. And then we have the elevation from the open data. You can, we can see it's about 100 meters of, of height difference. Then we have the speed limit of the road and the slope gradient of the hills, which were generated. This is pertaining to the route in questions to be analyzed. Then we had the bus models, the two different uh, concepts, the op opportunity charged, the chassis weight uh, for both buses, opportunity and depot charged was 10 tons, 10,000 kilo. The battery capacity was 80 kilowatt hours for the opportunity charged and 250 for the depot charged. Uh, then the total mass weight of the bus was there's a big difference, and this is because of the battery system. More than 3,000 kilos difference. And then the speed limit has to do with the gear ratios and, and, and so on. So 12 meter buses. And these are now then studied in the, in the following. 
So we, we selected a number of uh, routes in different conditions. This is a northern city, so we had winter conditions, a different number of passengers from zero to 90 passengers corresponding to different uh, load. Mm. Then we varied the, the frequency, of, frequency of stopping on bus stops. Uh, traffic incidents, the, the way of driving was modeled random with some random variables. And then we had some extreme cases with snow change, which just increases the consumption. And this is now again the Route 26, the same overview graph of, of where it's going. And then the elevation profile, 110 meters of, of hills. This is a round trip, so to the same hill two times. And then the simulation results on energy consumption. And this is now, first is the depot charged bus. And uh, let's just pick one. Let's take the full load, number of passengers, 90 passengers. And the red one here is energy for driving, 1.2 kilowatt hours per kilometer. And then we have the auxiliary systems, ventilation and so on. And then the green one is the extreme conditions, no change and so on. But let's just take a reference at 1.2 kilowatt hours per kilometer the full load with the simulated operation on route 26 and then the same uh, duty cycle with the opportunity charged bus so now we get maybe this is one kilowatt hour or 1.05 kilowatt hour so we have 15 20 percent less of energy consumption just because of the difference in the own mass the weight of the bus assuming still that also the depot heavier bus can take the full load it's not necessarily the case if, if the battery is larger then there might not be as many seats or as much space for for passengers because there's more battery on board but assuming that we can take the full load <clears throat> and then this is the battery state of charge soc on route 26 with the opportunity charged bus and this is just to show more concrete what happens with the the, the energy in the battery 100 percent is completely full battery and zero percent is that the battery is empty and the bus stays there and stops so normal condition good condition one round trip is much uh uh, capacity left left but then the extreme condition eats up and we can also already see here that we cannot do much more than one round trip without without charging then especially in the extreme conditions so going to results this was what i showed was route number 26 and totally here we have six uh, different bus routes total energy consumption in the range giving the, the number of passengers and the and the uh, different conditions <laughs> varies in a large range and now the maximum driving range in kilometers is given here and this is uh, already quite indicative of, of the limitation of this depot charge to bus concept so there's a maximum kilometer number of kilometers that can be run and this is the maximum number of round trips that can be performed with this bus there's one route 37 is short so we can run more but everything is around 200 kilometers plus minus of course if we increase the battery to 300 or 350 kilowatt hours we can drive more but then it's also heavier and there's less space for the passengers. And what we can see in the rightmost column is the typical number of round trips that the diesel buses run at the moment. So these are, all of these numbers are larger than what the depot charged bus can do, sorry. So this is already meaning that there's a severe limitation 
for the depot charged bus in the case that there's a requirement by the city or the PTA that the bus service needs to be intensive or high rate. So then if uh, this service should be run by depot charged bus, then there needs to be extra buses to serve so that one bus can go to the depot for charging and there's another bus driving and this will then uh, attack the economy because then it costs more to have extra buses for the service. And now this, this slide is for the opportunity charged bus for the same routes or lines and now we have delta state of charge so which is the part of the capacity used in percent of the total capacity. So now we are using maybe 20%, 35%, 45% maximum of the capacity of the battery for one round trip. And then the concept and idea is that it's being recharged every round trip, every possibility, opportunity is used for charging. And this, this is now the time in minutes needed for 300 kilowatt or 400 kilowatt fast charging how many minutes charging is needed and this is the reason why the high power is attractive because then the time needed for charging is uh, shorter and now the whole picture changes because these buses can run 24 hours per day and this as long as there is the, the time needed for charging at the end stop or the terminal this is continuous service and then the ultimate goal for planning the system is that, that there's the same amount of number of buses as conventional diesel buses when replacing diesel with electric and then the only difference comes from the capital cost of the same number of, of buses and then the operational and energy cost. So we are talking about three to five minutes of charging maybe six seven minutes in some cases in the rush hour this most likely there's some pressure to charge a shorter time but outside of the rush hour there might be more time available and this is just summarizing the total energy consumption of depot charge and opportunity charge buses so on these routes we see a difference of maybe 20 15 to 20 percent in the energy consumption and all of these it's important because this is much more than what we see in state-of-the-art diesel buses so between buses and bus concepts so there's a large variation in energy consumption and energy is kilometers and kilometers is service public transport service so then a few just a few words about the sensitivities this is now <coughs> showing studying the timetables of the buses in Tromsø on route 26 and this is the blue one is the maximum time available deduced taken from the timetables real operation schedules and this and this many minutes are available as we can see there's some some time of the day then even half an hour is available for charging at the end stop and then assuming some delay of service and so on so then the red curve shows the, the tries to be more realistic or uh, conservative on how how much time there is per round trip there's 12 round trips per day for this uh, this service this line and then we simulate with a tool having this uh, vehicle rotation, bus rotation scheduling. And then this is the state of charge during one day on Route 26 in Tromsø in extreme conditions. So the consumption is highest. And we can see that we can manage this, this time of the day, maybe in the morning rush hour, there are some areas where where the state of charge is quite low so in that case it pays it's more if you increase the charging power it gives more margin but otherwise we can 
operate quite nicely. And of course, this is assuming that all the chargers are operating. So in this case, there are two chargers at each end, end stop of the route. If one of them is out, then it gets more tricky. Then some time needs to be shifted and some additional charging needs to take place on the available charging. And this is just an example how important the reliability of the, both the charging system and the buses is. If the charging is not working, this concept is not working either. So this is exactly the task that Helsinki region is, is addressing now, just to be con confirmed and, and that the, the reliability and availability of the systems and buses is high enough and then the PTA will go to commercial tendering. And that's, that's uh, approaching this year or next year. <clears throat> so now the economy. Uh, this is, by, by the way, uh, uh, an image of, of the bus linker, which is uh, operating in, in, uh, in Helsinki. Uh, and uh, was also the bus that we studied for this case in terms of the opportunity charging type bus. So I will go directly to the uh, uh, results. And please note, these are not generally applicable. It's, it's case specific for the study in Tromsø. And why is this? We have grouped here. We have for the uh, depot charged bus and for the opportunity charged bus, we have identified that actually three routes, 26, 37, and 40, are close uh, together. They have the same uh, end stops, so they can utilize the same charging infrastructure for the opportunity charging bus. So we have combined them. And the left one here is the total cost of ownership euros per kilometer of operation. And here we see the low first part is the capital cost of the vehicle. The second one is the capital cost of the battery. So this is a major cost for the depot charged bus. The red one here, 0.15 euro cents, is uh, energy, the electricity. And totally we get maybe 1.15 euros per kilometer operation. Whereas the diesel, conventional Euro 6 emission class diesel, comes to 0.8. So, and here the, the fuel is much more expensive than, than uh, for the electric bus, and the capital cost is uh, less. At the moment, the, the, the diesel conventional bus is much cheaper to buy than the electric bus. It's not a mass produced uh, bus yet, so it, it's more expensive. We expect the, the, the electric buses to go down in price, purchase price, when the mass manufacturing and starts. And also the battery prices uh, expected to and will come down. So the, we've further done some scenarios and, and planning, trying to project how this will change. But the main message is that the depot charging bus is not competitive with the diesel bus and there was this one severe limitation which is not the operability in high high duty service there's a limit of kilometers per day that can be operated without charging and this is now the second concept the opportunity charged bus small battery so the the capital cost of the vehicle is still high but then the, the capital cost of the battery is uh, smaller because of the battery is smaller. Normally, this type of battery is more expensive per kilowatt hour, but then it's also more durable. It lasts longer. And there's a number of assumptions, of course, be behind these. And there's no time here to open the discussion to, for the details. But the main message here is that and the energy is still much lower here. Consumption is a little bit less, so this is smaller number than for the depot charging bus. And this is the diesel bus and the same 0 0.8, 80 euro cents per kilometer. Whereas the diesel, oh, sorry, that the full electric opportunity charging bus is maybe 70 
two or three, 73 euro cents per kilometer. And we, here we have also the uh, charger, the light blue here is the, the charging infrastructure cost allocated and spread out sharing with the, with the fleet. This is a fleet about, of about 20 buses on these three routes. So the main message here is that this, this concept is economically competitive. There's promise for that. Of course, this needs to be proven. Uh, summarizing, the studied bus routes in Tromsø were quite long, about 20 kilometers, except for one, 37. Uh, terrain was demanding, steep hills, and that should be the case in many Latin American cities as well. Climate conditions can be demanding with icing. In some other cities, it could be extreme heat. Both require energy for heating or cooling. It needs to be taken account, into account. Our analysis clearly recommends opportunity charging in terms of economic, techno-economic viability. The, 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 the power charging is not competitive against diesel buses. There, of course, there are the cases where it, it uh, is useful. It's easier to implement in, in the system. It's maybe easier for the first demonstration just to get the feeling of electric buses. But when the real rollout and larger scale adoption starts, then, then economy should uh, make uh, a strong point. And uh, then, the, of course, the availability and, and reliability are, are crucially important. But then it's, it's possible to reach economic competitiveness. Of course, there are uncertainties in the analysis and the numbers. And many of the parameters will change. For example, eBus vehicle price, we ex expect this uh, price to decrease, and this will improve the competitiveness of, of uh, electric buses. Battery price will decrease, improving the electric bus competitiveness. Battery lifetime will increase. There will be better batteries. There will be cheaper. Uh, service and maintenance. This is not something that is well known at the moment. There are too, too few uh, buses available. So that we expect the service to be cheaper for electric buses. There's less oils to change and so on. Charging, charging equipment, it will decrease in price when volumes go up. It will be more like a commodity type of things. Uh, we expect that the electric bus vehicle lifetime is longer. There's less mechanical uh, vibration and so on. Remains to be seen how much. What is the oil price? If we expect increasing oil price, this will improve the competitiveness of the electric bus, clearly. What is the price? Regulated emissions have a price. If you put that tag on the diesel bus, that will improve the competitiveness of the electric bus and so on. So this, most of these expected trends will improve the competitiveness of the electric bus. Very briefly, a few points to summarize before I conclude. <clears throat> so we've seen very high differences in the specific energy consumption in terms of the vehicle and the powertrain. Tens of percents in laboratory measurements, and this is much more than the differences we see for conventional diesel buses in, in same, same laboratory measurements. Of course, this correlates with the total vehicle weight including the battery weight, efficiency of the powertrain, the components, and, and naturally the route and duty cycle then plays equally important role, and the, the, the load passengers. In many cases, the maximum charging or regenerating power, one of the key benefits of, of electric buses is that we have can regenerate driving downhill or decelerating. In some buses, the, the battery or the inverters are limiting the power. 
so we, some energy is lost in the mechanical brakes. The lifetime of the battery depends, of course, on the technology, but also in the way it's loaded, the duty cycle. I didn't have time to discuss it, but it's also a very important aspect, how to optimize the life, lifetime of the battery. If you need to replace an, the battery and get a new one, then of course that brings some extra cost. We uh, recommend the opportunity charging concept. This is actually a system level uh, finding recommendation, but let's see. Yeah. Uh, larger batteries increase, increase weight and reduce passenger capacity. So if the service level is directly related to the passenger capacity, then large battery poses a problem. If, if there's less passenger seats. <clears throat> and then as, as the, I said also already for the economy, the, the final optimization for the vehicle and the powertrains needs also to be case specific. So to study the exact requirements like a steep mountainside hill in Santiago needs a, a more powerful powertrain if, if the route is selected so that it really goes into the steep region. Of course, the diesel bus needs to be the same also. System <coughs> and economy. So we really see uh, in many European and, and other cities, electric bus systems fast entering from pilots to open tenders. In the Nether Netherlands, there's already some open tenders. In Helsinki region, they are coming in many other cities as well. The opportunity charging concept appears as the most competitive solution and, and, and many, many cities are going for that. The daily mileage, the kilometers per day, is the most sensitive parameter. So basically, how to make electric buses competitive, use them as much as possible. High utilization rate will improve the economy. So this is good select the most most uh, lively traffic uh, routes for that careful system engineering is needed to optimize to locate the uh, charges dimension them and then the the, the the competitiveness can can come there and of course the uh, requirements from the city and the PTA. What is the scheduling rotation, available charging time? This is a very important uh, setting for the buses. If there's enough time to charge for the opportunity charging, if not, can, can the PTA and the city add a couple of minutes of charging? It costs marginally more, but then a very sustainable and, and, and good system can, can be designed with careful engineering. Of course, then scalability and rollout interoperability, and that has to do with the market. Different OEMs, vehicles need, need to work together. Different charging equipment from different manufacturers need to work together. That has to do with standardization. Uh, the grid impact, there are cities with very strong power grid, and there are cities with a weaker power grid. Some grids may need enforcement. That's uh, uh, one aspect to take into account in the, in the design, where to place the chargers, maybe a stationary storage to support the charging and so on. So there, these are the engineering and, and design questions. And basically what we always recommend is, is that when a city, a metropolis, wants to get started there's a, there's a strategy and will to do it hop on the learning curve and start with a, a small activity demonstration local activity build up the the players needed the, the city pta pto uh, vehicle manufacturers <coughs> power power utility service providers and this is the ecosystems that will be needed then when adopting the large-scale uh, uh, system. 
stepwise and and it's it's basically learning by doing and then by by doing doing it together this is the concept we are applying in helsinki region and and uh, and hopefully we can transfer that to to chile santiago through the activity already ongoing and then we would be very interested in, in looking into possibilities maybe to transfer and and help assist even in even further cities in latin america to get get started in the process with the demonstration pilots and then hopefully scale up to commercial level i think with that i would like to thank you for your attention and the kind invitation to speak about the very interesting topic on energy buses and i hope this has been interesting and i could answer some questions if you have some either now or then later on at, at uh, by email my email contacts are in the first slide we can also distribute some of the material to the organizers thank you very much Thank you so much, Miko. This was an excellent presentation and uh, it's very hands-on. You, you tested it, you showed the results, and I think this does help the many cities and countries in Latin America that are already exploring this topic. We have received a number of questions for you. Um, let's go, um, maybe I'm going to pose a couple now. Yes. And you try to respond them and then a couple more. And um, we probably will not have time to respond to all of them, but we will compile them, uh, send them to you. And if you could respond in writing, um, and then we will send it to, to the countries that are asking. So yes. I will start with one we got from uh, Costa Rica. They asked uh, which bus technologies you used in this uh, project and what specific brands? <clears throat> Let's say if I talk about Helsinki, so it started in 2012 and then there were uh, technologies where both the first ones were depot charging buses, so large battery and, and depot charging. And the brands, well, there has been BYD from China, Ibasco, BDL. Uh, a Portuguese uh, bus Caetano and then uh, uh, later on the first opportunity charging bus was made by Linker this is the Finnish Finnish company who is now being piloted in in Helsinki further in in Europe there are at least two to Volvo is one and Solaris from Poland is another brand and this is maybe already covering at least in Europe, most of the cases. And, and many of them are currently opportunity charging, but also some of the buses available, especially the Chinese made brands are also depot charging. Excellent. Um, the next question comes from the Ministry of Energy of El Salvador. They're asking what type of industrial safety measures um, are are being taken into account for this type of uh, public urban transport projects? I mean, are, are there standards, specific standards, which are integrated here? I think you're talking, uh, meaning mostly like electrical safety, like we, we are bringing systems with, with higher voltage, like typically the batteries are between 600 and 800 volts so clearly they need to be standardized and the, the the working safety and automation have to be in place and i think that's part of the homologation process of the vehicles and the emc and magnetic electromagnetic uh, regulations and these uh, belong to the approval process that's at least the european case of course then there will be differences maybe from country to country how the safety measures uh, are taken care of but of course it's some electrical systems that need to be safe when to activate the what is the automation in the charging event when is the 
uh, voltage good and how to make sure that there's no voltage available in the in the systems when the bus is not there. They okay. understand the station and they are of course the local national safety organizations normally take take care of this. Okay. <laughs> Next question we got uh, has to do with the outcome of this uh, research project in Tromso. Um, how how was it received? These um, recommendations and and outputs, and what is the the local authority doing there concerning uh, you know taking decisions about deploying this technology in the city? Actually, they have taken it very positively. They have a. Uh, plan also the, the the Norwegian government they have initiated a support some uh, subsidy mechanism for for getting the, the city projects running so they have applied and and received a support grant for organizing a pilot uh, for smart uh, like opportunity charging and I think the next step for them will be to procure some uh, buses for the pilot so they are proceeding to the next step like from the, the feasibility study to a demonstration and pilot and then based on that hopefully also next steps okay <laughs> um, the next question uh, has to do with um, um, actually it's not related to this specific project but uh, they say that uh, the city of london uh, mm -hmm. has put place uh, a number of uh, electric buses uh, it has a high degree of electric buses already do you have any experience of what technology um, how is it working in, in London uh, I believe I don't have the latest London is also involved in the project the ZEUS the UITP project and I believe they have actually two types they have both the debore charging bus and then the fast charging, opportunity charging bus. I don't have exactly the up-to-date uh, results and experience from there, but I know that they have a very ambitious uh, plan and they are one of the cities who have uh, the highest number of buses actually in operation. And that's also a little bit special because they, they have many double-deckers and so on, which basically have the same same powertrain, but then a little bit special design. So basically, they are they are using both both concepts and 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 depending on the route and application, looking in, into both. I have yet to speak with them directly and their their local partners of, of the experiences in more detail. Thank you, Miko. Um, there's another question which has to do with um, the opportunity of using the batteries um, when the buses are not in use to mm -hmm. feed to the grid and help in stabilize uh, demand etc have you have you any experience about this what do you think about it yes i think it's it's a very attractive possibility of course and this is the the world smart grid and vehicle to grid and grid to vehicle and and smart charging and demand side uh, management and so on so especially in when the distribution or uh, generation will get more distributed so it's it's a good opportunity but with the electric buses there's some limitations of course now we are talking about very high utilization rate a transit system and the main purpose of, of uh, buses is to transport passengers of course and if they do that 20 hours per day then there will not be really so much available for the power grid the only thing that they need fast charging or if it's the poor charging bus of course then they they spend more time mostly during the night and they could serve the power grid in those those times but the, it's a more limited potential as i see there the primary purpose of buses is to transport people of course it's a slightly different than with the 
private passenger cars, which are typically maybe run one hour per day and then 23 hours per day they are connected. And then when the number of passenger cars gets large, then there's a much more possibility for them to, to do this kind of service. All right, Miko, thank you. Sorry, but we're going through emails because we're getting lots of emails here and it's difficult to choose mm -hmm. the questions. Um, there, there's one that just came in about the real, what is the real efficiency of these buses in cities with, which have very steep streets? But I guess you addressed that somehow before. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the efficiency, it has a many, it would, it would require a long answer, let's say, for it like this. But optimally, I think the energy efficiency is roughly four or five times better system-wise in, in electric buses than in diesel buses. And there are many reasons for that. One is the efficiency of the powertrain. I just discussed with a colleague today, and in the best case, optimal case, the, the powertrain from battery to wheels efficiency could be 85%. And this is much, much more than for diesel bus. And then the second one is that the regeneration, if we can avoid using the mechanical brakes, then we gain additional extra. And then the, there can be differences in vehicles in terms of how high power can be regenerated through if it's a bottleneck in the inverter, in the power electronics or in the battery. Not all batteries can take high, high power through the wheels and so on. <clears throat> so we see big differences between bus, uh, buses and bus solutions in the total efficiency. And I think that the best numbers maybe were those that we gave for the energy consumption per kilometer. There can be up to 50% difference between different electric buses. And the best ones are up to five times more efficient than the diesel buses. And the worst ones are still much better in energy efficiency than diesel, but still some energy is lost. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miko. And uh, sorry, but if you allow me just one minute more, we will just post one last question and, and we, we close it here. Um, yes. This uh, The question is coming from someone who's asking about these um <clears throat> large battery buses which are um donated in many cities of latin america according to your research um opportunity charging seems to be a better option what, what implications do you think this has for latin american cities Of course, yeah, it's it's a very large, large question. Uh, let me start with saying that I think the overnight, the large battery overnight charging bus, it can be a very good solution. It's it's really, we should start discussion, analyzing the requirements of the city or the application or the, if it's a, let's say a tourist bus that has a lot of time available waiting for the next tourist group, then, then it might be a very, good and easy solution to charge and then make a, a round trip of, of two hours around the city and come back and then wait for the next one. But if we are talking about high, high rate, high service level, 24 hours, regular, very tight, high duty bus service, then there are limitations for, for keeping up the, really the uh, service and operations running at the viable cost. So then I think the, the requirements and the application needs to be analyzed. And then the implication to the cities in Latin America or any city, I think then it's, it's uh, like system level implementation of the depot charging bus is easier. Then you just have the depot and the charging and then you drive basically you're limited with the kilometers and the cost structure is not maybe optimal, but it's, if it's good enough, I think it can be a good option in many, many use cases 
or then if it's it's really high duty regular then you choose the opportunity charging as the economically viable and then you need to work more on the systemic implementation where to charge how to charge and you you need a little bit to work more on the on the ecosystem and the players and they need to work more together the city the operators the energy company the grid operator service providers and so on so which way and maybe it's a combination of, of both approaches and then and this is also what we suggest or propose to to have a demonstration of pilot maybe choose both concepts and see what works better in those local conditions and and use cases that are at hand thank you very much uh, miko um we have a couple more questions but we will send them to you you in, in writing and and hopefully okay. you could respond to them so that you can go for dinner tonight uh, we really appreciate your time here um, what we're seeing here is that um, this technology needs to be analyzed it has mm -hmm. definitely fantastic opportunities when it comes to to cause when it comes to economy when it comes to a reduction of um, energy consumption and of course pollution um, but it is very, very important to, to do this sort of testing before um, any city, any government, any um, operator takes a decision to go forward. Um, and, and this is the sort of analysis that we, we as this partnership between um, Centro Mario Molina, Chile, VTT, and as in UN Environment are doing already in Santiago de Chile to help the Transantiago to move to electric buses. And as I was mentioning before, the, our, our interest would be based on the lessons learned and the experience in Europe that uh, Nico has mentioned, what we're doing down, down to earth here in Latin America, how, how other Latin American cities and countries can benefit from it. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are here with open arms trying to help um, governments in, in other parts of the region. So if you have any other request, any other demand, any other question, please uh, approach us. We would be more than happy to, to respond. And muchísimas gracias a todos los que han estado conectados en esta jornada. Seguiremos el mes próximo y bueno, mantengamos este movimiento mantengamos esta esta participación y se lo agradecemos mucho que estén ahí mes tras mes participando. Thank you very much, Miko. Have a good evening. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Chao. Gracias Chao. a todos. Gracias, Lourdes.